Hi, um, welcome to Show Studios live panel discussions. In these discussions, experts from all parts of the industry discuss and debate the most important fashion week shows of the season. Today, during Milan Fashion Week, we're going to be discussing Parada. Um, I actually quite liked my jazz hands just then, just if anyone wants to comment. Um, uh, I am PC Williams. I will be the chair of this conversation. I am a uh, freelance fashion stylist and costume designer. I'm also a lecturer at um, Central St. Martins. And I'm gonna have my lovely panelists uh, introduce themselves. We'll start with Mona. Hi, my name is Mona. I am an architectural student at CSM and I also am an image maker experimenting between photography and styling. And Rosie. Hi, I'm Rosie Wallen. I'm a course leader at University of Westminster for BA Fashion Design and also a researcher in sustainability at CSM. And last but not least, Suki. Hi, I'm Suki Mack. Um, I'm a freelance creative director and fashion stylist. Perfect. Look at us. <laughs> Women doing things. I'm here for it. Um, so I thought I'd start by asking um, each of our panelists, what their initial thoughts were on the Prada show. Um, Suki, what, what did you think of the show in just in general? We'll, we'll delve deeper into it, but I just wanted to get like your initial thoughts off the bat. I always hate to say this because I, I, I always like to come with a really positive approach and kind of picking up what you said earlier. I've not always been the biggest Prada fan, um, mainly because I like glamour I like I like the glam I like the, the gowns I like this but I do feel like with it I enjoyed it but I wasn't overwhelmed by it I, I really wasn't I think this I like the modern approach to it but I wasn't I wasn't on the floor okay, interesting um Rosie what about you what were your initial thoughts oh uh I think my cat is about to look <laughs> my cat's <laughs> making <laughs> I thought that was gonna happen um, I actually, I have to say I did enjoy it because I thought, uh, I thought I'm, I'm shamelessly going to steal a point that you just made PC earlier, which is that I thought it was really interesting to see, uh, Mucia Prada and Raf really kind of come together, um, in this collection. Cause it really did feel much more like a coherent whole than the, than their first one together. Yeah. So I thought that was really um, interesting. I also quite like the sort of slightly Blade Runner-ish kind of avatar-ish feeling of the show. Um, it felt kind of like, you know, virtual reality a little bit. You weren't sure whether it was real or not. Like I know Rem Koolhaas did the, did the design for the set, but I wasn't sure whether it was wholly real or whether it had been created in a 3D mm. software. So I, I don't know, I, I kind of geeked out on that a bit. And, um, and I liked the sort of mix of uh, suiting with these kind of jacquard bodysuits, um, which I thought was quite reflective of COVID. Like, you know, this idea that, you know, probably a lot of us are imagining are quite sick of uh, leisure wear and quite want to start being smart again. Um, I'm ready so, to go down. And, I, and I felt it was a bit of both. You know, you had the kind of body suits, but you also had the suits. Hmm. Um, and I thought that was quite interesting. So there was a lot of it that I found uh, quite cool, actually. Nice. And Mona, what about you? What were your initial thoughts? So I really enjoyed that it was like, it was very like playful. I think it was quite nice to have that like play on like materiality and texture and just how that was like transitioned both like physically through the space and throughout the collection. And that was something that I really, I think that we're really starting to see them like come together and establish this like really interesting, like new kind of like language mm. where it's almost like their two styles are conversing in this collection. It's like, yeah. you can see those conversations coming out through the clothes, which, which I, I, I enjoyed. I agree. I think that there, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine this morning, um, a stylist called Nas Dinakola, and he's like the biggest Prada fan. Like Prada can give you, you know, 
the worst thing ever and he'd still be like oh my god but inside this really awful thing there's something amazing um and I was we were just talking about the show and we we're talking about like his perspective and also like my perspective and one of the things that we we felt was that this show felt like they finally understood how they could work together yeah. you know it wasn't it was no longer just a wanting to work together a wanting to bring in this new energy and, and new ideas but actually a realization of how that can happen mm -hmm. um and by by saying that it felt more prada than before raf joined but there was still really big RAF elements in there. And it feels as though that's the kind of conversation, that's the kind of language that they're developing where it's it's gonna always have the Prada aesthetic, but he's able to bring in some fresh contemporary ideas and shapes and 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 just like, you know, twist things a little bit without without disrupting the narrative that they've already, you know, set out. So I found that I found that part of it interesting. Um, like I was saying before the before the call started, I'm not the biggest Prada fan, but you know, I like color and oversized things and skin and like fun and nothing in my wardrobe is serious. And so, but whereas Prada to me is a very serious, you know, sort of sort of clothing brand. And actually, I felt I found the styling really depicted that. There was hardly any skin on show. And I thought that that was really interesting, like from from the, the models necks all the way down to their feet, you didn't see any skin. I think you can point out like maybe like four or five looks where you had skin on show. The rest of it was totally covered. And I thought it felt sort of like this really conservative woman and her armor, you know? And within her armor, there were be there were these playful elements. And actually, I was thinking about specifically if we can go to like I don't know if you're able to pull this up, but look ten, and it was the black coat with the white boots and the red gloves, where it's you know, and it's just like everything is like covered, but there's something quite joyful within that. I thought that the accessories, this oh yeah, there's the yellow one and then the black one, perfect. I thought the accessories, like those gloves, were amazing throughout. Um, so I just wanted to touch quickly um, on the set design because Rosie, you're right. That set really threw me. Mm. Um, you didn't know I, if it was real or not. Yeah, I also think it set the tone for what the show was going to be. Yeah. Um, the textures and the textiles. You know, norm when I think of sets for fashion weeks, usually I'm thinking of quite sterile spaces, quite clean, open, quite like unless it's a building that exists, it's it's taken away the, the, the personality and the personality is brought through from the clothes. Whereas I think with this, the set design set a tone, it set a personality and the clothes seem to fit in with that. Um, I wondered what you guys had to say about it. I love the softness of it. I mean, you kind of imagine like a load of three-year-olds going and running around and kind of, you know, playing in the fake fur. Yeah. They would love it. Um, but yeah, I love the softness. I thought it was also really interesting that in the notes, uh, in the um, show notes, uh, they really made a point of saying that it's all going to be upcycled because mm. that's a hell of a lot of fake fur, you know? And uh, they said that it's all gonna be upcycled and donated to Meta, which is a circular economy project in Milan. So I thought that was interesting that they felt the need to put that note in, which implies it was real, not artificial. Not yeah. um, because yeah, the sustainability isn't really um, in evidence in this collection. That's something that I noticed, you know, it's sort of, they hadn't even made a nod to that. And I think in the light of COVID, lots of people are kind of wondering where fashion's gonna go now. You yeah. know, it's a real sort of fashion reset moments where we're having to kind of think about the future in terms of kind of materials and things like that so I, I I thought it was an interesting choice fake fur yeah I think that um I, when I look at the colors of that set um so it makes me think about your aesthetic um mm -hmm. and like you know the work that you do and I, I was interested in what you had to say about the set the set design I, mean, I love the set and I think that's what 
actually made me a bit more attracted to the collection. I think if that wasn't there, I'm not sure if my eyes would have been kind of focusing on, like, there's a few pieces throughout that collection that I thought like the accessories I thought were great. Um, I mean, I've always loved Prada, but I guess it's, it is the modern day kind of women and they're trying to bring this kind of, you know, m like modern twist to it. And that's just nothing that I've really fit in with. Um, but yeah, the set is incredible. And it's funny to see, because for me, fashion is like a show. Like, like one of my favorite designers is Tom Brown. And I remember when I first went to Fashion Week in Paris, like I, I don't even I think I was sitting on like the third row or something at that time it was a long time ago and I remember just like I had to sit at the front because I just had to see what was going on around this and I and I remember this feeling that I was in the right place because that was why I got into fashion that was you know it's meant to be like overwhelming and fun and colorful and I think for a really long time I felt a bit out of sort because my work is like exactly like that sequins fur fluff without trying to be on the borderline of tacky, but I think this collection for me, um, cause I, I did, I had a look at the menswear and I was kind of thinking how do designers, like it's easy for us to make comments when we don't have the pressure of having like a, you know, a multi-million dollar brand behind us. Like how do they transition from having shows and having the hype and all these things to having like um, an online show where they have to get our attention and like how, how do you do that so I think the set was really great and I think it's tacky but it looks with the the, with the composition of the, the collection and the and the set it just works it really does work and, and I, there were sequins there were sequins as well yeah, you yeah. notice the sequins inside some of the shawls there were sequins too I really loved I loved the set um, and, and Mona, obviously your work um, as an architectural student and like the work that you're doing outside of, of, of your course is about our relationships with spaces and, and fashion and space and that language. And so I'm really interested in your take on the, on the set design for, for the show. So I think it really framed this like tactility, this like um, contrast of like materials and color and even just like this layered space that the models were kind of transitioning through that was also reflected in like the styling of the clothes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one thing that was interesting was it was, it's framed very much as a fashion film. So mm -hmm. like as, uh, even, as much as it's a show, it's, it's presented very, very intentionally. So um, just even this idea of like having enclosed walls and like presenting it not necessarily as like the standard like walking up and down a runway where it's more like this like circular space mm -hmm. um also what was interesting for me was the way i think traditional fashion shows you are sitting in an audience and you are kind of in control of where your eye goes mm -hmm. whereas in this case um the designer is in control of your gaze mm -hmm. so your eyes are no longer static and you're being something that i loved which really helped kind of understand the tactility of it was like the scalability of like the shots of how, for example, you started like at the back of at, like, and I think Ram Coolhouse said this in the interview after where he said the, the, like you start the show and you're presented with the back of a garment and you're also presented at kind of eye level. So it like grounds you and then it follows like right down to the feet where you had like these like delicious moments of these like platform heels, like literally sinking into this like soft uh, carpet. Yeah. <laughs> it was so satisfying to watch. Um, and then you kind of had these like more peripheral shots. So it was like your, I just, I found it so interesting how we're constantly being like pulled in and out of the collection. Um, and I think something that, that Prada said was using technology to kind of reach out to humanity mm. and like human things. And I think that was something that was done, like that was really, really successful. Like I wanted to touch everything. Like it was, um, it was so material. And I think the set really helped with that. I totally agree with that. I think, uh, I think it was really clever actually because often virtual environments can seem very cold, chilly, kind of, you know, unappealing. Yeah. Really and it, it did really draw you in with the materials. And the thing that you mentioned about this idea of, you know, starting at eye level 
and being close up and then having this really wide shot. It's the play on on silhouette was the same. Mm. You know, you had yeah. these really figure hugging tight pieces with these huge oversized bombers draped over them. And, and it was this idea of playing with scale. And so yeah. they were doing it in as much as they were doing it in the film, they were also doing it within the garments themselves. Like I think the garments, you know, we can talk, I mean, this yellow coat that's on the screen at the minute, um, which I think was look 11, those sleeves and the exaggeration of that shape I think is just um, incredible. And then you've got her little arms coming out of it and in, in this like this colored glove. And I was just like, how you're able to, the film and the, 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 the tactile nature of that film, when you saw the garments that were coming through that space, you're like, of course they're gonna make that. Of course it's gonna be this marble and this fur and this carpeting because everything as it's walking down the runway is a, it's 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 sensory mm. i found it to be a really sensory collection now regardless of whether you're into the clothes or not into the clothes the clothes made you feel it made your senses be alive because of the text the textiles that they were using um you touched on it really briefly earlier but i wanted to talk about the knitwear yeah i thought the the, the jacquard like knits were for me as someone who studied knit at csm like the best thing Mm. so brilliant and so and and such a diverse way in which it was used from the, the clashing the clashing yeah. of all the different knits together and the colors and that's very Prada I have to say I mean yeah. she's always done that uh remember she's known for kind of ugly chic mm. and and I felt that that kind of ugly chic really came across in the knits um in a really good way and it felt fresh I think that it was was it like the first I think it was like the first three looks where it was like head to toe clash, knits, um, gloves, the knitted wedged boots. I just thought that using the using those textiles in that way was really exciting. And also, you know, you're right, it set the tone for the ugly chicness that we were about to witness. But um, I also felt like combining that with the sort of suits and the big coats, it was almost like you felt like these girls could whip off their coats and then start doing yoga in the bodysuits. And that's what Raf said, wasn't it? He said that, you know, he, he liked this idea that, that you could go from one, one kind of activity to another in these bodysuits. And, uh, and yeah, that would have been a great finale if they'd all just whipped off the coats and started Down. doing downward facing dog. <laughs> um, I'm just really interested to know, like if you guys had any like favorite pieces I definitely did, but I would love to hear you your your thoughts. Now, I know Soki, you're not you're not out of all of us. You're probably the least oomphed about the collection, so I'd be really interested to hear. I which I, I actually feel really horrible because I was sitting there while you were talking, and I was thinking, do you know what really reminds me of? I always get this brand name pronounced wrong because I'm Scottish. Is it Marine Serre? Yeah, yeah, Marine It really yeah. reminds me of that. And I and obviously I'm a huge pioneer of um independent designers. I always have been. Um, and ever since working in this like fashion world, I've always really found it crazy how we just reuse the same designers because of advertising. And then to me, I'm not a stylist anymore. I'm just this look selector. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I do feel there's a strong reference to her, um, like the whole vibe, the body suits with, the, you know, all this kind of clashy stuff with the nod to the like the matrix kind of vibe on it you know this whole thing that's going on at the moment where it's like end of the world apocalypse um dystopian vision red, yeah red pill blue pill kind of vibe um i feel that there is a nod to this but i i do like there is um one look in it where it looks like it's like off the shoulder like a fur now that that fur to me always just looks i always said it looks tack but that um is it g g b g m b h yeah. yeah they just did a, a similar look where it was like a black suit and they had the I think it was like a fake fur like like brown kind of I'm trying to see if I can I mean it's not on that but I, either way that's my favorite look from it because I kind of think 
Yeah, let me see if we can. If you go down, this is that's Prada. Yeah. <laughs> I saw someone go and click on in the GMBH. But yeah, I think um the, my favorite look was the the one where it looks like the coat and it's got the fur at the top. That that to me, like if I was shooting, that's what I would select. It's something you can kind of work a bit more yeah. with like you know like as a stylist you, when you select looks you, you pick the craziest most colorful the look with the most pieces mm. um, but I just I feel like I don't know like when I was looking at this before this call I was a bit like I preferred I preferred the menswear because I think it, it yeah this that's the look it kind of reminds me of that look what do you think was missing from them from the women's wear that you liked in the menswear I don't, do you know what the thing is, is like um, the menswear with the, the knitwear and the, and the all-in-ones, it, it just feels a little bit more, oh, I can't think of the word for it, but it was a bit more off, which, which I, I quite like, but with women, because obviously the women have these gorgeous bodies and that, I just feel it was a little bit more like, kind of like pioneered towards sales. Mm -hmm. um, like the styling looks great together, but it just, to me, it looked a bit more like that's what they had in mind. And um, I'm a massive fan of Raph Simmons and I did feel like this. Of having it in mind. Like, Do you not think that that's something as a, as a designer, especially in the times that we're living in, like, po like in the middle of a pandemic, hopefully coming towards post pandemic, mm -hmm. that you're thinking about what people will actually use and have use for as opposed to like, you know, pieces that look great on the runway and you put so many hours into, but you won't ever see a return on because people aren't living the same sort of lives anymore. You know, I think, I think for me, I felt like this collection was a reflection of a real woman yeah. and, and, and yeah. what real women will actually use in their wardrobes in real life. Mm. And it's an elevated version because of the incredible styling, but actually you can see, I can take this piece and put it in a woman's wardrobe and it will go with what she, it will go with her life. And I think designing that way, thinking about the reality of life is actually really key and a really important thing for designers to be considering, especially with the times that we're living in. Soon, later on in the future, we're gonna to wanna to go into fantasy mode more. But I think for now, it's nice to see an elevated version of reality. You know, it's nice to see an elevated version of of the lives that we're inhabiting because and Michi, is, Michi Prada always talks about that too like she talks about you know the the job of the designer is is to sort of do that is to sell is to kind of make practical uh clothes in a way um and I think that's that's very much her her ethics mm. um, I think it, I sorry. was gonna say it's interesting oh, how she um how she plays with that practicality though I think something that she does a lot is like she plays between this idea of does form follow function does function follow form and I know like she mentioned a lot she mentioned um like this idea of ornament throughout this collection and I think that was what was interesting was how she kind of played with well how they played with like the knit kind of being this ex like and the clothes kind of being like an extension of the skin mm. Um, and then also like you had these details where the ornament was a pouch. So the ornament is functional mm, and yeah. like all of these like things. So it's almost like the, the fabric acts as like a wallpaper to the skin. And then these functional things are also like placed it like there was a pocket at the back of one of like one of the jackets, which I thought was such a like interesting detail. Um, so yeah, I think she really plays with what does it mean to be functional and what does it mean to be like ornamental? And also with beauty, like what, you know, coming from Italy, which is famously sort of all about, as you were saying earlier, PC skin and kind of like showing skin and like baba boom, the woman as the kind of, you know, sexy uh, sort of um, icon or whatever. But she's very, uh, she's a feminist. She's sort of against that kind of, well, not against, but, I think she's probably been dipped in that her whole life and is kind of trying to present a different kind of beauty, which is sort of not about exposure so much perhaps and is more about other things. Yeah, I think that there's the idea of, you know, being sexy whilst being totally covered up. Yeah. 
really interesting. Which can be done, believe it or not. I know it's shocking, but yeah. <laughs> but it can be and, and, and I think it was done so successfully here because or, you know, you, you mentioned this thing about this ugly chic. Yeah. Although that's the the their aesthetic, I actually never I I never looked at any of those models walking down and was like, mm, that's really ugly. I was like, to me, they all seemed like so confident and so like powerful, and and there was like a sexiness that came from that mm. that you wouldn't normally I I think you know generally associate. I personally loved the coats. I was like. If I can have all of these coats in my wardrobe, I'm living my best life. Give me the yellow coat, give me the long parker in look number 30, with that the fur trim, give me the black coat, give me the like those sleeves, I, like that coat, that look that's up on the on this page now. Life. I was like here for it. And I just thought, I think especially now, because of the times we're in we aren't buying as much stuff as we were buying before. And there seemed to be a lot of effort put into the things that we're always going to need a winter coat. Mm. We're always going to need, you know, a jumper. You know, the, the practical items that are needed in your day-to-day -day living were, I think, the items that they really put a lot of the effort of design into. Yeah, and she talked a lot about the shawl as well, didn't she? And this idea of protection. Mm. Um, and I think that, you know, a lot of the coats have got that kind of feeling, that wraparound feeling yeah. of, of sort of wanting to feel cosy, wanting to feel protected. And, yeah. uh, and it is an autumn winter collection. So, yeah. you know, um, I think we can all relate to that after all that cold weather. You know, you do want to just wrap something big and cosy like a duvet around you. But I'd love to have that feeling and they have that feeling. They do. Um, so we've spoken about the prints and how amazing the prints were and how that's actually just been like a staple of the Prada. Like, you know, they've got this incredible archive of prints. But, I, you know, the way that they were using the prints with the knits, I thought was just really fantastic and really, I don't know, to me, it, it was done in a sort of like fresh way. Like a lot of those fair arm knit jumpers you'd, you'd associate with like an older lady. But I could see, you know, a kid and foundation coming in, rocking it with like, you know, and just and it just feeling natural to them. Um, and I wanted to just talk quickly um, about the textiles because we've kind of mentioned it a little bit, but we haven't really, you know, we've not really mentioned this idea of like the sequins and what that did to the collection and, you know, the way in which that the textiles were, were used, like juxtaposed against one another. And I, I think Rosie, I'd like to go to you first, obviously as someone who leads on a fashion program, like your choice of textiles is so key and important. Mm -hmm. um, and I wondered what, what sort of like, you know, what you had to say about it. Well, I just thought it was really um, uh, an exercise in kind of, um, as we said, sensuality. It was super sensual, you know, the way that they used materials, um, even down to the way that, uh, the sequins when they came in were inside. They weren't on the outside always. They were often on the inside of the shawl. And I loved that. I thought that was really clever, that inversion of kind of, you know, having the show on the inside. So you almost imagine them going, ta-da, you know, um, which, well, maybe that's just me. I would enjoy that. I uh, would enjoy that. I'd be like, show me again one more time. Um, so yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was really cleverly done. The colours were really great. I loved the fact that, I mean, lots of us do wear black in the winter time. I wear a lot of black, um, but there were even with the you know sort of more boring colours, there were always pops of colour with that. So there was never just black on its own. It was always kind of lifted with some really interesting kind of purples and greens and um, red, red and yeah, and a bright glove. You know. Yeah. So, I'm always saying that to the students, you know, you can have a very neutral collection, but if you just add in some pops of color, yeah. it lifts the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Another person who does that um, really well is um, Dries, Dries van Noten. And I thought some of the colors kind of had a Driesy feel about them, but really, really well done, I thought. I agree. I am. Um, I, I want to come to, to, to Siki now and ask about the, the accessories, the pops of color. And I think as a stylist, we're often looking for ways to 
elevate looks and to bring a bit of personality into outfits. And I just wanted to have your take on the styling um, of the show and, and the use of accessories within that styling. I mean, I think the the styling is really kind of what, again, for me, I mean, apart from the three coats that we were talking about, the, the yellow, blue and the green, I think that a lot of the collection can kind of, um, from a stylist point of view, can it, it can be hard to represent in a photo. Um, but I think like the accessories, I mean, I love, love the gloves with the pocket. I mean, like, I think it's almost like, um, like they were thinking, right, obviously this has been a really tough year for everyone. Like number one, like without showing skin. I mean, how do you think that women were going to take that if we had women walking down the runway in like the skimpiest outfits, like when we've been sitting wearing tracksuits at home for like a year, eating our way through everything. Yeah. But like in the way where we've kind of like myself, like I was a complete slave to fashion. I remember, you know, I would make sure I spent any money I even had that I didn't have on on these items and this year you've really we've all kind of understood that you know there's maybe more important things but I think comfort is a huge thing I mean I know that we probably haven't worn heels in like a year and I think like the cut that collection like the boots the gloves like the the kind of ease of the little pouch you know where we don't go out without a handbag I think those are really kind of my favorite points in it. And I also really like that, obviously, with it being fall, the layering, it, yeah. to me, like I think the layers make it really, it's quite key. And to be honest, you know, I'm gonna mention this, that my first initial reaction on the collection is personally my own style, which is I never really tend to wear black. But over the last few years, as I've got older, I realize that I don't have to look dress like a drag queen at all times <laughs> and, and it's actually funny that when we were saying about the glamour and the glamour is I, I have a colleague that I work with and he has been the one that's been teaching me how to be more chic <laughs> and I think this collection if he was to watch this he would have said to me how dare you he is like your friend PC like biggest biggest Prada fan yeah. ever he, he would have he would be like how dare you but I I think the accessories are amazing. I think the collection is amazing itself. It was just my kind of initial personal style. Well, that's what fashion is. Fashion is, a, fashion is a tool that enables us to have these conversations and have opposing views and through discussion and, and feel and touch and emotion, like come to a space where, you know, maybe our opinion have been transformed. Maybe our opinions are even more steadfast, but we've, we've listened and we've gotten something. I think, you know, those boots, I, I live and die in a trainer. I don't own not one pair of non-trainer shoes. I don't, I don't own anything that's not. I, I mean, wanted those boots though. <laughs> yeah, I wanted those boots, those knitted wedged boots. I was like, when can I, I get they're gonna, they're gonna sell out big time. So amazing. And also just such an incredible way of like bringing like some sort of like nostalgic feeling of like 70s disco to like a modern wardrobe. So cleverly done that they don't, they don't even feel like it's a nod back to the past. They feel yeah. so far, far forward. Well, that was another thing that I wanted to, another point I wanted to make, which is it felt to me quite intergenerational. You know how you were saying earlier that you thought Prada was kind of for older Italian women? Yes. For me, this was really, interge it felt very intergenerational because I could imagine my students wearing it's some of it. About the I would also wear it and my, and, you know, my older relatives would also wear it. So I, what I thought was also very clever was it felt sort of quite intergenerational. It wasn't aimed at one specific yeah. age group for me. I think that's what I was saying about that fair arm knit, like black and white cardigan, which is like, I can totally see an older woman wearing it as yeah. well as someone who's 18 and is stepping that foot in CSM for the first day wearing it, you know, yeah. like, and it will fit in their wardrobes seamlessly. Yeah. I think the strength of this collection is the fact that any woman could wear it. it and it's theirs. Yeah, and, and that, but that is a really hard thing to do. So As a designer, that's a really hard thing to do, to make yeah. something apply to different age groups. Yeah. Um, I wanted to go to Mona because I think I've like, 
not had enough from you and you've got such an incredible mind and I want to hear more. And I wanted to talk um, about, because obviously you're a modest woman um, in, the, in, in, in terms of like, you know, the fact that you're a Muslim and so you're wearing a headdress. And, and I think that this collection felt as though it's picking up on the fact that more labels have to address mod like modest fashion and i wanted to just and this is coming from a very personal space for you but i just wanted to hear what you thought about that i thought it was so interesting the way like how minimal the skin was hmm. and i think what's quite refreshing is that it's kind of done in like i think with everything that um with prada does in particular is there's a lot of intention there mm -hmm. um which is which is really nice to see that that I think even if things feel like that quote unquote Prada ugly, like she's, it's, there's, there's an intention and there's an intelligence mm. in the way that she puts these collections together. And I think what's nice also about this collaboration, this collaboration is this idea of this tension and this push and pull between like, um, skin, but also things being like quite fitted and tight. Mm. Um, and then like this, like I love this play on like volume and tightness versus I just think there was so much in terms of contrast there, mm -hmm. which was such a nice way of and a, and a refreshing way of looking at the body. Yeah, because I don't think it's done. I don't think it's done a lot where um, where the body is kind of treated as an object where fabric is kind of treated as like a wallpaper. Um, and I think there's definitely like this intelligence there of of this gesture and this tension and also like sense of humor like what happens if you line something with sequins um and what happens if you like that beautiful like yellow coat like you have all of these conversations happening within one storyline which makes it um which makes it fit like fit so many women because there are so many things being pulled across across um, the collection yeah. Well, that just made me think of something, though, and that is, I mean, um, I think it was Jess Cartner Morley in The Guardian who said, she said, a job share at this elite level has never been attempted in fashion. And I, I just wondered if exactly what you were just talking about, Mona, was the result of conversations and why we don't have more of them in fashion. You know, it seems to be that this old style of having a sort of star designer working in isolation with their vision maybe that's something that's going to fade away a little bit and we're going to have more of these collaborative conversations because I think more interesting things happen then. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, we, we, apart from the head designer, all the other designers are working in collaboration with one another. Course, it's how, yeah. it's how, the, it's how the, the industry operates. Yeah. But to have it all on one, one person's head, to have the design aesthetic to rest rest and succeed and fail on one individual to me this conversation this narrative this language that Machia and Raf are developing it is feels like radical cool. it feels good yeah, yeah it's yeah. like a bl blueprint for what is going to hopefully begin to take and I think you know you look at Bottega Veneta that's an example of a collaborative of a of a of a of a, of a two-person head designer mm conversation and the clothes that come out as a result of that are better much better yeah and i think i actually think that that's probably the perfect way to bring this conversation to a close <laughs> and actually i'm going to go to each of you guys and ask you um any lasting thoughts or opinions um about the show and i'm going to do it in reverse so i think i ended last I ended with Suki last time didn't I so I'm going to come to you first okay um let me think I mean I think it's time that you know fashion kind of woke up and we had a change um I think overall you're you're right I think the two of them working together you can definitely see this brand kind of evolving into the modern day woman. And I think it was very um, flattering. Mm. I think it was beautiful. Um, personally, it wasn't my taste, but it was a really great collection. Really great. 
Nice. And Monan? Um, so for me, I think what I'm excited about is I think they're setting up um, like the codes for what, what's coming. Mm -hmm. So I'm really interested to see how this like continuous conversation like develops and is articulated through both fashion and like uh, spatially because I think Prada collaborates a lot with OMA which is which is why it's always nice to see the way her collections are presented wholly and um, having these conversations around them so yeah nice. Rosie yeah I mean just I, I agree with what everyone said really um, I just think that the future of fashion is about collaboration it is about conversation and uh, we can't we can't do any of this on our own. You know, you can't make a collection on your own. Uh, you need other people. So I think, um, yeah, I think that's really exciting to see that conversation. And also the way that it's presented. I thought that one of the big successes for me of this collection wasn't just the clothes. It was the way that it was presented, which was really interesting. And I think um, that's something in fashion film that we we need to be also investigating going forward, like how we present clothes. I agree. I think, I think it feels as though the conversation between Michia and and Raf is coming to a really interesting space, mm. and they're creating a language that works for the both of them, but yeah. that also is like you know respectful of the history of this house. Yeah, which I think is really key and really important. Um, I think it was just really nice for me to see a collection which didn't feel as though it, it was dismissing the pandemic and it was dismissive of this past year. It actually took what's happening over the last year and wore it on its sleeve, you know? It was like, okay, this is the time we're living in. These are the things that you are struggling with. These are things that you are living through. This is how our clothes can help aid that situation, you know? And I thought that, to me is a sign of a great designer because they're, they're understanding that design is part of the world we live in. It's not mutually exclusive. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, I wanna thank you all for being such incredible guests and panelists. Um, I also wanna take this moment to just say, Mana is actually an ex-student of mine. So it's really lovely getting to do this with her on the on show studio. So thank you guys. Um, thank you to all the panellists and thank to you to you guys for watching. For more extensive Fashion Week coverage, be sure to visit showstudio.com. And if you're watching via Show Studios YouTube, be sure to like, comment and subscribe below. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye.